Good morning and welcome to our virtual service. The Lord be with you. Great to have you join us at our recent virtual services and for those of you who are local at our outdoor drive-in communion services as well. If you're joining us as a guest or a visitor, welcome. I look forward to meeting you, getting to know you, and we don't have to wait to meet in person. I've met many of you over Skype, Zoom, and FaceTime, so please let me know if and when you want to meet, and we can get acquainted soon. For those of you who are indeed new among us, if you'd like to follow along with the materials posted, please scroll down to see the link to the bulletin as well as the welcome card. The kids' message delivered by our preacher for today, Pastor Gary James, is available on a separate video. And you can find that file through the link to our worship page, which also contains a bunch of other materials for Sunday school, announcements, and so on. So having gathered what you need for worship, we now join together in praise, prayer, and hearing God's words of challenge and comfort during these days. Let's begin. In the name of the Father who loved us so much that he sent his Son to suffer and die on the cross for us, and of the Son who rose victoriously over the grave, evil, and death, and of the Holy Spirit who strengthens and comforts us during these days of uncertainty. Amen. We join in opening our praise to God. Praise to the Great One indeed. Blessed be that Holy Trinity, 
one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. We reflect in quiet. We together confess, reconciling God. We confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven, so we live for hope and in hope. God's love has surely been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, for the word of the Lord. Good morning. The first lesson is read from the book of Isaiah, chapter 56, beginning at the first verse. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right. For soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is read from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 11, beginning at the first verse. Paul writes, I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, 
they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's time to hear the good news according to the Apostle Matthew, the former tax collector, the 15th chapter of his account, beginning at the 10th verse. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his powerful teachings. And now as we prepare our hearts for the hearing of the message, we join in singing the hymn of the day. We begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, let these words today feed us with your grace, keeping our hearts and minds open to receive your message of transforming love, peace, and hope. Amen. Insistent, firm in asserting a demand or an opinion, 
unyielding, demanding attention or a response. Persistent, refusing to relent, continuing especially in the face of opposition, stubborn, persevering. So I ask, are you able to define your faith in those words? Well, in our gospel text today, we experience a woman who does just that. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Imagine that you're traveling with a friend who is leading you into an area of a foreign country that you have been told is dangerous and not a place you want to be. And while you're there, your friend meets a person who needs help and knows that knows that your friend can provide it. Your response, like mine, would probably be, no way, but not your friend. He remains aloof and inattentive to the person, but the person insists, persists, and finally your friend gives in and meets the person's needs. As you are headed back to a friendlier place and thinking about what happened, how would you characterize the actions of your friend? Or even more, what did you learn from his actions? In today's gospel, that's how we find Jesus and his disciples. Unexpectedly, Jesus was traveling with his disciples from Galilee across the northwestern border into Phoenicia, a foreign territory of people who lived there were Canaanites, not Jewish. But Jesus went there anyway And Matthew tells us about the only thing that happened during that brief visit, an event which had a tremendous meaning for the disciples then and is of indispensable importance to us now. While there, Jesus was approached by a woman begging him to heal her daughter. Matthew further points out that the woman wasn't of the house of Israel, but a Canaanite, a despised enemy of the Jews. The woman persistently pleaded that Jesus do something about her demon-possessed daughter. But, as our text says, Jesus did not answer her a word. On top of that, the disciples seemed to confirm Jesus' lack of interest as they begged, send her away, for she is crying out after us. However, she persisted, refusing to give up. At last, her wish was granted, and Jesus said to her, O woman, Great is your faith, be it done for you as you desire. Because Jesus wasn't popular or well-known in her country, her faith wasn't based on some well-thought, unarguable logic or even any real strong visual evidence. Her faith had come the hard way. Her reason for believing was not that someone else in her circle of friends and family had already done so. Her faith was a mighty upwelling of her own soul and a heroic venturing forth to touch a power beyond. Her faith was also great in its power to move it to action. It stood her up, got her going, and brought her to Jesus. And against all odds, it caused her to persist and not give up. Her faith was great in yet a third way, in its consequences, its results, the benefits it brought, and the fruits it produced. First, Because of her faith, the self-sacrificing object of her quest was achieved. Her daughter was made well. Second, because of her faith, Jesus' disciples gained insight into the nature of Christ's mission in the world and their role in that mission, a role each of us needs to learn and understand as well. Indeed, the woman's faith was great in what it meant to Jesus' disciples what it did for them and their understanding of human relationships. Because of her demonstrated faith, the disciples learned that all are welcomed and anyone can come from anywhere to the Lord. Now, having set the stage, let's take a deeper look in in this moment as it played out on the Phoenician road. Jesus, taking his disciples with him, has left Galilee his own land, and has gone into a Gentile country. Why? To teach the Gentiles, perhaps, but undoubtedly to teach the disciples walking along with him. Then, as they are walking along the road, his chance for teaching comes. 
It comes in the person of a distraught foreign woman who become, because of her persistent insistence, finally reaches Jesus and cries out, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. Now imagining myself on scene, I sense at this point that Jesus glanced quickly about to be sure that his disciples were listening and that they would hear what he was about to say. And then he said this rather startling thing. I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In other words, don't you know that I can't do this for you because my help is to be given only to the Israelites. On hearing this, I suspect the disciples, looking wise, nodded their collective heads in approval. Jesus had just said precisely what they had assumed to be true. He is their Messiah, and the rest of the world are outsiders and have no part in Jesus' mission. But the woman doesn't accept this. She doesn't believe he's here just for the Jews, and she's not going to give up. She kneels before Jesus and pleads, Lord, help me. Again, I see Jesus looking out of the corner of his eye to see what effect this is having on his disciples. Then, speaking so that all may hear, Jesus says, it's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Again, my thought is that Peter, Andrew, and all the rest are whispering and saying among themselves, see, just as we thought, he's only ours. So we ask ourselves, what's Jesus doing with these strange, uncharacteristic statements? What he's been saying is what he knows the disciples would say and what they expect him to say. I believe that he wants them to hear what such declarations really sound like when said out loud in everyday conversation. He's building a situation of contrast. He's about to demonstrate a mighty truth and he wants to do it against a background that will give it absolute clarity. And the woman is about to help him do it. Unfailing in her faith, undaunted in her courage, unwilling to give up, she presses her prayer to the point of argument when she says, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. At this point, the whole scene changes. Suddenly, Jesus springs alive, a vibrant vitality replacing the assumed air of indifference. He has maintained up to now, and he shouts, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. Not expecting this, the disciples are taken by surprise. This woman is one of the outsiders, yet Jesus has let her in into his caring, into his blessing, and into the benefits of his power. A wave of consternation flows through the clustered group of disciples. They are amazed and even shocked, perhaps. Jesus has let them know that the master has come not just to them, but to the world. So the roadside drama ends, and Jesus turns his group of followers back towards Galilee, their own land. Just what happened here? Well, it's quite apparent that Jesus went into Phoenicia to teach his disciples a non-negotiable fundamental of his ministry. And without question, the disciples should have learned that lesson. The lesson, the ministry fundamental, was that anyone can come from anywhere to the Lord and to his kingdom. And the way for coming is a simple path of faith. How well those disciples learned that lesson is something we really don't know. But more importantly, how well have we learned it in our day? Is it simply a lesson for the disciples or an active component in the character of Christians today? Do we understand what Jesus is teaching us about the worth of others and his mission in the whole world? Do we understand that anyone, no matter their character, can come to God? and that they have access to God no matter where they come from. I hope so, for this is one of the fundamental insights, non-negotiables, of the Christian gospel that we grasp the worth of an individual simply on the basis uh, that he or she is a person. When confronted by the Canaanite woman, Jesus didn't ask who her parents were, 
didn't inquire about her social identities or her husband's influence in the marketplace. Nor did it matter that she wasn't Jewish. He simply didn't care about her definition in society. She was a person with a troubled heart, a need, and she believed, and that was enough. Now as then, when Jesus, with Jesus there are no outsiders, and with us there shouldn't be either. We need to understand, as someone has said, that our brothers and sisters are not chosen by us. They're given to us. Within limits, we may choose our friends, but never our brothers and sisters. They are ours, not by reason of what we or they have done, but by virtue of who they are, like us, members of the human race. Some may be prodigal, wandering in far countries. Some may be invalid with de deformities of mind or spirit. Some may be lost in the deep, dark wilderness of sin. Not all may speak our land language, be our color or of our culture, but all are welcome. All may come from wherever they are. In one singular respect, all of us who come to Christ are from somewhere. How far or how close is not an issue. The only issue of importance is that we do come to our Lord and his message of salvation. And the road traveled is faith. No matter where we start the journey, faith is the road that will lead us all the way to him. However deep in sin, however lost in the wilderness, faith is the way. No wasteland is so wide. No chasm so deep that faith cannot bridge it. It was the Canaanite woman's faith which brought her to Jesus. She believed in their, him and therefore she came. And when others made it difficult for her, she kept coming. And although there was much to discourage her, she refused to be discouraged. It is faith which stands one up, gets him going, and keeps him going until their quest is finished. And there is every reason for you and me to have that same kind of faith. We have seen God's sheer grace played out for us at the cross of Jesus Christ. We confess that on Calvary's cross, Jesus gave himself over for you and me when we say that Christ suffered and died for us. That means that the cross is the ultimate expression of a loving God who gave his only son into death to redeem the world, the whole world. He will welcome, welcome anyone who comes and will put his hand of blessing upon everyone who does. The demons are still out there. The temptations to doubt, to self-importance, to second-guessing the will of God are all around us. But Christ fights for us in the gospel to keep us trusting in him from sin, death, and the power of the devil. May your faith in Christ be strengthened today through the gospel so that you remain is insistent and persistent in your faith, humble before God and man, and devoted to one another in love. Amen. been strengthened by the word, we now share our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now for the announcements. It is so good to be with you and share God's hope with you. Again, for first-time visitors who are joining us, you're welcome among us virtually as well as in person. Now that we have started meeting together in person in a limited way, pending the conditions out there. For those of you who have not been on our campus, we've posted a full virtual tour of our campus, which is on the home page of our website. Please share that with your networks as we invite friends among us, both virtually during this pandemic and beyond. We will also be posting an introduction to Good Shepherd shortly, including the virtual tour, as well as a signature sermon about our namesake, the Good Shepherd, and a signature musical anthem about the Good Shepherd. So please stay tuned for that file. Our videos are offered on multiple platforms, both Vimeo and YouTube, and our podcasts are available in the app of your choice. For those of you who are joining us on YouTube, we encourage you to click the red subscribe button and the bell icon so that you will never miss a video. It will then alert you by email personally that the next video is ready. And if you're joining us on Vimeo, keep up with our channel by clicking the blue follow button. You can also click on share in both YouTube and Vimeo and invite others to join us in our services, devotions, and other videos. In addition to our outdoor drive-in communion services, a number of our groups are meeting for various gatherings outside on our campus, and a few groups will soon be meeting indoors as well, assisted by our new small groups meeting health guidelines for the use of the fellowship hall and the gathering place, which is now posted on our website. Guidelines for small group gatherings in the sanctuary here for baptisms and small weddings will also be posted shortly. Those of you worshiping with us, especially in the Sun Belt and in the Midwest, who are going through lots of hurts right now, you're certainly not forgetting, forgotten. You're in our prayers and thoughts. So please hang in there and stay safe. Visitors and all, please mark your attendance, share your prayer requests on the virtual welcome card in today's worship materials. That really does help us make our shared ministry as current and engaging and helpful and informed as possible. For those of you who are not members and have been worshiping with us for weeks or even months, please make yourself at home among us. We're also working on providing a virtual Good Shepherd Connections class in the fall. This class also doubles as our new member class, an opportunity to know more about Good Shepherd, connect with us, understand our values and our ministry, no pressure to join, just getting to know each other. The class will include recordings by video that you will access, and then live video conferencing, and an optional outdoor meet and greet in person accompanied by masks and distancing if you live in this area. More about that very soon. In addition, please do not hesitate in putting our prayer chain to work, intercessing for you. There's so much to pray about these days, and our 107 or so core prayer warriors are in their prayer war rooms ready, commissioned, and passionate, fueled by the Holy Spirit. Life groups, cluster meetings, Sunday school classes, prayer meetings, Bible studies, other gatherings continue online generally throughout the summer. Pastor James will be leading a Sunday school class starting sometime in September. And for our kids and youth, we will have more gathering times together by video conference led by our Director of Christian Education, Andy Muick, starting this fall. So please stay tuned for more details. And by midweek this week, if you could use an extra word of encouragement, the midweek recharge will not be a devotion, but a series of prayers that may be of use to you during pandemic times, prayers of care and healing. So please check that out on video, YouTube or Vimeo or on audio using your podcast app. 
Starting in the fall, as I had alluded to before, we are planning to retain Pastor Gary James on a regular basis, not only to help us with preaching, but also with our virtual Sunday school offerings on a regular basis. So I will call on Pastor James to assist with pastoral counseling as well. So we look forward to seeing more of Pastor James among us. In addition to being introduced to Pastor James on Facebook soon, we have also started posting introductions on news and announcements of our recent additions to staff, including Matt Hardy, our lead video specialist, Grace Linder, our communications assistant, particularly focused on social media, and Dan LaMaestra, who in addition to serving as our praise band director, is our audio engineer. So please come to our Facebook page and see pics and messages of welcome and share your notes of welcome and thanksgiving with them and with us. And for those new to Facebook, you'll find in our Vimeo and YouTube video files, it's a blue video file, that's the image, an instructional video walking you through connecting to various media platforms that we use. Josh Linder uh, from our Board of Servant Leaders is the guide. Absent swift deterioration of the health scenario here in Virginia, the next outdoor communion services will be held on August 22nd, 22nd Saturday at 9 and 10. Sign-ups will be posted soon. Worship includes music, confession of forgiveness, the liturgy spoken and sung of the service of Holy Communion. So not just drive-through communion, but a service of Holy Communion, a drive-in service. Detailed instructions will continue to be shared, including how to sign up and what FM station you'll need to tune into in your cars. And in the fall, we plan to beef up this service starting in September with a reading, a short devotion, a communion hymn, and a different setting of the service of Holy Communion. So please sign up and join us on these special Saturday mornings. Virtual Sunday school classes and the virtual worship service will continue to be focused on Sunday mornings. Whether virtual, hybrid, in-person, or outdoors in worship and ministry, we give thanks to God for your continuing and very considerable generosity in supporting the ministries of this congregation in these challenging days. Because of God's generosity revealed through you, we've been able to add help to our staff, add more support in mission efforts, and we'll be adding more support to community service starting in our new budget year beginning September 1. We're expanding our reach and our support as well as adding more quality to our programs and services. Our featured mission video today is a piece about Lutheran social services of the National Capital Area, another of the agencies Good Shepherd financially supports prayerfully. This organization's work includes ministry to youth in trouble, adoption, foster care, and refugee resettlement. You'll see three short stories of impact now. Growing up, what I understood was that the STD that my mother was diagnosed with, she can die from stress. And me and my sister, uh, we were stressful. Everything changed when I arrived at Youth Haven. I was able to embrace who I really was. I am not a box you check. I am bold. My home was breaking apart. My mom was an alcoholic, and so they took us away. When I first got to my foster mom's house, it was kind of hard for me to adjust because I felt as if if I got attached, then I would feel sad if I had to leave. Love you. Make it an A day, OK? And then I was loved. I am not a sob story. I am a fighter. I am a survivor. I am bold. I was born in Baghdad, and we lived in peace before 
قدوم الحرب عندما وصلنا إلى أمريكا كنا نخاف يعني خليط من المشاعر مجتمع غريب تقاليد غير تقاليد وبعد ذلك كان مرحب فيه I am not a number. I am Bob. All right, three stories of real people with real issues and challenges lifted up by the work of Lutheran Social Services and its supporters like us making a difference for Christ in their lives. That is why we are together as a congregation. We've come together to tackle the great challenges in this world that our neighbors are experiencing for the sake of Christ. But none of these challenges, addictions, diseases, fleeing from war, no distancing, no mask, no prejudice, no unrest, no pandemic, war, fire, hurricane, technical glitch, persecution, nothing, will stop us from sharing about the ministry of Jesus Christ. They will not stop us from offering the powerful gospel in word and deed and in help for our troubled neighbors and extending the reach of Christ's ministry and mission here and throughout the world, advancing God's kingdom. Christ has raised us up, uh, built us to be strongholds of good during these difficult days. We were bred, equipped, strengthened to be good witnesses, models, and servants for these times. In fact, the obstacles we encounter in these days only cause us to rally our efforts, redouble our mission-minded resolve, and share the powerful good news in word, deed, service, praise, prayer, and love ever more relentlessly. We will meet the challenges empowered by the Holy Spirit to faithfully, passionately care for people, intervening, intercessing, guiding, supporting, molding, healing, serving, praying, progressing forward in mission until God calls each of us to our real home, our eternal abode with him in paradise. We ask the Lord for power, for reach, resources, energy, innovation, and he responds. He has provided, he does provide, and he will provide. Amen. Alleluia. We now join in the offering moment of our service, prayerfully considering a one-time gift or recurring gifts to enable the expansion of God's kingdom. Info about online giving or text giving will be on screen momentarily. Although most of our giving is now done electronically, you can also mail in your contribution old school. So now we lift up the musical offering to our generous God from whom all blessings flow. We
Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours. And your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Nourish us through your gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world through Christ Jesus, our strength and our song. Amen. And now we continue our service with the prayers of this congregation. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, you gather the church to be part of your mission as ambassadors of Jesus Christ. As our Lord acknowledged the great faith of a woman from outside his people, help your church discover and find blessing in the faith of people we might reject. Sustain our virtual and in-person ministries and deepen our relationships with the wider community as we keep our eyes fixed on Christ and his mission. Renewing God, expand the reach of this congregation so that it can be a light to many. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we continue our hybrid ministry, we ask you to provide us safety, wisdom, discernment, and strength. Thank you for the sacrament of communion which we do not take for granted. Provide all of us patience, understanding, and empathy for each other's opinions and cares, frailties, concerns, and needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show steadfast love and direct us to ask of you what we need. Help this congregation request boldly for what is most needed. Refresh us with new dreams of being your people at this time, in this community, and broadly over the internet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have blessed us with the bounty of the earth. Grant your grace to all creatures that the earth would flourish. Relieve waters choked by garbage, renew soil stripped of nutrients, and refresh the air all creatures need to live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call the nations to be glad and sing for joy. Let your way be known among all the nations of the world now divided by competing interests, contending alliances, and consumed by enormous worry. Bless us and make your face shine upon all. Sustain and keep safe all who work to defend, safeguard, and promote the common good across the world, including our very own Erica, Patrick, Claire, Scott, Nate, Carter, Jonathan, Bob, Yasmin, Mark, Megan, Krista, Joel, Alex, Carson, and Jackson. Provide each of them and us a heart for fairness and empathy. Provide hope to the growing numbers of those who are furloughed, unemployed, or without health insurance. Bless the continued ministry that this congregation does through its coronavirus relief fund. Guide us by your mercy, grace, and steadfast love. Lord, hear our prayer. show an unexpected mercy, kindness, and generosity. We pray for those who do not have enough, for outcasts in our villages, cities, and towns, and for those who need your healing, especially our very own Leslie, Donna, Martin, Donna, Michael, Allison, Brenda, Deneen, Lisa, Sharon, Lily, Georgia, Roger, and many other family and friends requesting our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering and satisfy their needs. 
bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind. Comfort all the families whose loved ones have died or are suffering from the pandemic, as well as those suffering from mental health issues. We ask for your continued protection of those joining us in worship from the Sun Belt and the Midwest and throughout the world where the virus has spread widely. Put your healing touch on those infected, those awaiting test results, family members sequestered from their loved ones, those on the front lines treating patients, and the scientists and lab workers working feverishly to develop accurate tests and safe and sound and effective vaccines and therapeutics. Lord, continue your ministry through the work of doctors, nurses, physical therapists, researchers, midwives, chaplains, counselors, hospice workers, other health professionals, those who serve in the funeral industry and all who tend to human bodies, many of whom put themselves in harm's way, including our very own Barry, Alexia, Carolee, Chad, Sandra, Laura, David, Megan, Jennifer, Errol, and Jane. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are new to the community surrounding us, for students, parents, and teachers preparing for our complicated and challenging new school year, and for those struggling with unexpected hardship. Supply us generously with your grace and your wisdom for our life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In you we live and move and have our being. Grant our congregation grace to find our life refreshed in you. Accompany us in the rhythms of late summer. Give us rest and renewal. and Strengthen us for mission in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your eternal promises are more than we could ever imagine. We pray for the family and loved ones of Nemi Azam's cousin Habib, who we lift up to your mercy and grace. And pray for Nemi and his extended family in mourning from the many recent tragedies in Beirut, Lebanon. As you gather all the saints, join us also with them on that great day of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holding the life you provide sacred, we celebrate the birthdays this week of Emmett, Stephanie, Errol, Lindsay, Tyler, Ariel, Danielle, Walt, Jeff, Mike, and Barry. May their birthday celebrations and shared love of Christ reveal the Holy Spirit's love, life, and light in the midst of disease, destruction, and despair. Lord, hear our prayer. certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dear siblings in Christ, neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers 
nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. For we trust in all
And now depart from this worship service in God's peace and share the good news using the enormous gifts God has provided you. Thanks be to God.